family of God, we rejoice in this season of Advent, this time of preparing our hearts and minds for Christ to come, that we can rejoice in his presence now as we are preparing, that we can continue to celebrate his lasting hope, his abundant, amazing grace, that we can be enriched and empowered and enabled to be so much more than we might ask or imagine. Let us prepare our hearts and minds as we hear this first reading of Scripture be coming to us today from Isaiah. We'll begin in the 59th chapter at verse 19 and go into the 60th chapter down to verse 3. Pray that our hearts and minds are open to hear what Scripture is saying to us, the church. So those in the West shall fear the name of the Lord, and those in the East his glory. For he will come like a pent-up stream that the wind of the Lord drives on. And he shall come to Zion as Redeemer, to those in Jacob who turned from transgression, says the Lord. And as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit that is upon you and my words that I have put in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth or out of the mouths of your children or out of the mouths of your children's children, says the Lord, from now on and forever. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations will come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your dawn. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us hear also this reading from John's Gospel. He'll be reading in the third chapter, beginning at verse 11, going down through verse 21. Pray that we will hear what Scripture is saying to us, church. Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and the people loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May all who have heard these words trust that they come from our good, gracious, and loving God that he is pouring out his hope upon us this day and forevermore. Let us bow our heads and go to our loving God in prayer. Almighty, powerful, heavenly Father, Son, and Spirit, Emmanuel, we pray that we will welcome you into our lives, that we will have your word fill us up to overflowing, that we will hear and know, and that we will go out and shine your light before all people. We thank you, God, and we praise you. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Whenever 
Barbara Diane and I had gone on our trip for our 10th anniversary, we had the joy of taking a nighttime stroll. Of course, since it was right after the time change, it felt like it was midnight when it was only six o'clock. I know many people have been bemoaning that darkness and how it comes, how it wraps around us, how it makes us feel so, so far away. Dan and I went out for our walk and we took this little electric lantern with us we had so that we could see where we were walking and be sure that we didn't trip down the steps over the berm that they have between our uh, place of residence and where we were going down to the beach and we're walking along and of course as that little light would shine we'd see little creatures scurrying about and different things and we'd laugh and joke and enjoy things and we got to a point where we thought we should look up and, and take a view of the sky, hoping that we might see some stars and things. Turned off our lantern. We were amazed at how bright it was from the moonlight that night, how much we could see. When we started walking back, we didn't turn our lantern back on because we could see so much better with that broad light that was covering everything. I had a new revelation in that moment thinking about the scripture where it talks about the people who walked in darkness had seen a great light. It's the reality of so often of our lives, we're going off of the light that we have. It's kind of the idea if you hold a candle right in front of your face, you can only see a small amount. No matter how bright it is anywhere else, your eyes focus on that small light in front of you. When you pull that light away, if you've been focused on it, you can't see anything for quite a while. Your eyes have to adjust to this great light. I hope as Christians we are seeing God's great light, that we are looking for what God is doing around us and through us and for us, that we are not being distracted by the news we hear or distracted by perhaps the pain we might feel in our body or perhaps the excitement we might have. But that we are looking out at the broader world and seeing what God is doing. Scripture is such a powerful thing. I hope we read it and think about it. That we look for how that might be in our lives. That we are hoping and praying for God to reveal himself in these words. Are we aware of God's covenants? Do we think about those? Are we mindful of that agreement that God made so long ago that has been passed on to us? Are we thinking about these words that should not depart from our mouth? It's not saying we shouldn't speak them. It's that we should be speaking them constantly so that they are always there, praising God, giving thanks for God, looking for how God is working in our lives. And please don't be feeling condemned if you have not spoken any praises to God. It's just a reality and a call that we need to wake up to how much better our lives will be if we are giving God that praise. If we are confessing our sinfulness and brokenness and rejoicing that God has forgiven us. In this season, I know it's, it's the, 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 the force of things as time works out that we have pumpkins and Christmas stuff all at the same time, you know. That we have that reality of Thanksgiving has pushed right in to the power of the holiday of Advent, that celebration of Christ coming. Yet that thankfulness and Christ coming should be going together that we should be trusting that no matter how dark it gets that God is with us that his light is shining even though we think there is darkness around us maybe we're thinking more closely of the darkness that is within us our brokenness our sinfulness our selfishness Do we recognize our selfishness is sin? 
there is a small amount of selfishness that is needed to care for yourself, but most of the time we make it way bigger than that. We make it where we want what we want, when we want it, for as long as we want it, until we want something else, and then we wanted that before and never even remember that we wanted something else. That we push our opinions, our feelings, our judgments, our everything off on other people, or we think that those people are putting all that stuff onto us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that we are that recipient, or at least we could be. That whoever believes in him may have eternal life. I chose this pericope the way I did, this pericope being the number of scriptures, the number of verses that we read to try to hope and frame our mindset to guide us in looking at Advent, that God is coming to save us, that he wants the best for us. Not just the short life we might live here, but eternal life, a life that stretches out and has impact beyond what we are doing. You may be more mindful of scripture that tells us that, you know, does anybody remember what happened a hundred years ago? Do we remember what has occurred way back when? We had a birthday celebration this week, 87 years, and thinking back to what happened 87 years ago. They were reading things, and I was thinking, wow, that was then? Of course, things I used to know and yet had not thought of in forever. Of course, that's the reality of Thanksgiving and Advent is to be evaluating, to give thanks, hopefully, and to look for what is to come. Where do we place our hope? Again, to look at my own brokenness and think about how I have hope and set up, if, well, if it was this way, this is how I would hope it would be. I, I, caught myself this week thinking as I had smashed my finger for yet a third time in a short amount of time of like, you know, I guess I had completely fooled myself thinking if I had enough faith, I'd quit being clumsy and hurting myself. That I might remember, you're always going to have to go about certain things in patience and mindfulness or you're probably going to smash your finger or pinch some skin or otherwise be hurting yourself. And as God always does, he takes that and says, and Roy, how do you think your faith life is going if you're not being mindful about me and seeking me and being led by me? You're going to be that person bumbling around in the darkness even though there is a great light, the great light shining out for hope, for love, for peace and joy. We talk about Emmanuel in this season of Advent, but God is with us always. God is in this world. He is around us. He is for us. He is working to do good for us. But what are we looking for? What are we expecting? What have we placed our hope in? All of the prophets are calling the people back to right relationship with God. Isaiah is telling the people yet again, you may think you're the chosen, but if you're not confessing your transgressions, if you're not trying to live as a child of the king, you're going to be forsaken. The covenant was made with all the Israelites, but it's only applied to those who are working in, with, and through, and for that covenant relationship. Christ is coming. We can hope in that, but we can't think that we are secure and safe and can do what we want. We have a great and mighty king, but are we serving the king or are we serving our own interests? Are we serving our own beliefs and 
power or are we submitting to our God? Are we submitting to the possibility of his hope, to the truth of his hope? Like, well, why did you go from possibility to truth? Well, it's the whole reality of how does our mind frame Advent? How do we frame each day? Are we going out saying that, well, maybe God's out here. Are we going out looking, maybe it'll be a good day, maybe God will bless me, or do we wake up and proclaim, God is with me. His hope is eternal. Yes, it may be a hard day, but I'll be okay because I have God. Are we thinking, is this person going to be easier to deal with, or are we going, it doesn't matter how this person is, I have a great, mighty, and powerful God, and it'll be okay. Are we expecting to have everything be just as we hope it will, or are we trusting that God's covenant is greater and that it will be okay because of his great and amazing hope, his love, his peace, and his joy? I know some of you may cringe that I confess to watching Hallmark movies. I find them to be a very safe thing to watch so that I won't have my intelligence too badly destroyed or worse yet that I'll hear things or be, visualize things that I'll have nightmares about later because that seems to happen more and more these days. But in watching one of those Hallmark movies, this family had discovered a package that was from 20 years prior. The joy they had in finding it and continuing to discover it was an advent calendar. So they each day opened another little thing and how they were happy and excited about that. the whole reality of Advent for us. We need to be opening up to God's Word each day and discovering those new presents. Because if we take Advent and we just think it's lighting the candles at church and spending a little time on Sunday and that's going to take care of us all through the rest of our lives, we're missing out on God's promises. We're living out our prayer of confession in the wrong way, that we're continuing and faithfully doing the things that Scripture says we should not do and the things that Scripture says we should do, we're not doing. We've got to apply Advent in our lives daily. If you don't have an Advent calendar, maybe you should go and find one today so that you can be opening those presents from our great loving and powerful God, that we can be encouraging ourselves and those around us by being reminded of his continual love and power in our lives. I know as kids, me and my sister always look forward to the 1st of December because that's when we put up this big, long Advent thing that had Hershey's Kisses tied to it. It was always exciting. To, it's my day for the kiss. You know, it occurred to me, why in the world didn't mom get two of those so each of us could have a kiss? Or maybe have four, one for me, one for my sister, one for mom and dad. We could have all had that joy of that little chocolate kiss. Some of you may be thinking, I want something bigger, like a whole hostess Twinkie, or maybe a giant piece of cake, or something like that. Well, the whole reality of any of that comes down to the power of how do we think about what we're getting. One of my many activities of trying to deal with my desire to eat food constantly was to have someone talk about the power of that Hershey's kiss. To think about if you just stare at that kiss and think about what it is, that little shiny wrapper, to think about what is inside of it. And all 60 of us in the room were suddenly having our mouths get all moist as we were thinking about tasting that wonderful chocolate. And said, and, and, and don't just immediately rip the paper off and throw it in your mouth because then you'll be gone and you'll be wanting the whole bag. It's like slowly unwrap it and think about it. And don't chew it up, but when you place it in your mouth, let it sit there and all those juices that are flowing, let that chocolate come and envelop your mouth and your taste buds so you can fully enjoy it. That's how we need to be reading Scripture. If you find any joy in my sermons at all, they're online now, so you can actually watch them again if you would dare. And you don't have to actually watch me. You might just want to listen to it. There are all sorts of powerful preachers online, men and women proclaiming God's word boldly and powerfully. 
Sometimes there's even children doing it. The question is, are we looking for God? Are we trying to savor His hope? Or are we just putting it in the corner and forgetting about it and wondering why we're struggling? It's a challenge for each of us. I know I'm constantly having to do that. As I hope I'm demonstrating in my life illustrations of me hurting myself and thinking, why wasn't I thinking about God? Why wasn't I being mindful of His love and care? Why am I upset that I've hurt myself when I could just be thinking, well, Lord, I rejoice that I can feel this. And it pushes me to remind and draw closer to you because that's what this relationship is supposed to be doing drawing us closer to God drawing us deeper into his great and wonderful light that we might be transformed and renewed and that we can go out and shine that light for all people arise shine for your light is come hallelujah amen let us take that great light out into the world let it shine out for all people that we may give God the glory again and again. May that light continue to shine here, there, and everywhere. To God be the glory. Amen and amen. Family of God, I invite you to stand and join with me in our statement of faith, the 100th Psalm. Let us join together as we read. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name, for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Thanks be.